I'm in, and I'm thrilled that he's here. Please welcome the very funny Mr. Brian McKim. Thank you very much. My name is Brian McKim. I'm a stand-up comic. I love country music. I'm from the South, South Jersey. In just the last six months, I have given up alcohol. I have given up caffeine, and I've given up sugar. To save time, I just tell people I've given up. I was a little tense. I think it was the internet was doing it to me. The internet drives people nutty. Yes, it does. Now, instead of getting into fights, getting into arguments, getting mad, I just try to confuse the shit out of people. My favorite is to go on to Craigslist. The other day, I go on to that barter section, the other day was a guy on there, he says, uh, he types in, uh, I have a large bird cage, what do you have? So I typed in, a large bird. <laughs> hey, that's not how this works. I'm following some weird people on Twitter. I was following Sir Paul McCartney. The other day he tweeted, if slaughterhouses had glass walls, nobody would eat meat. So I tweeted right back at him, if my neighbors had glass walls, nobody would have sex. These people on Facebook, uh, they uh, always saying that their relationship is complicated. Compli get out of here with that complicated. I'll tell you complicated. I got a twin stepbrother. <laughs> people ask me, are you a glass half full kind of guy or a glass half empty kind of guy? I think in order to be a good stand-up comic, you've got to be a little bit of both. Give an example. Had dinner at a Chinese restaurant. After the meal, they gave me a fortune cookie. I cracked it open, and it said, you will be reunited with an old friend. Well, that's nice. I hope he's alive. <laughs> I grew up in a large Catholic family. Large, that's a relative term. Uh, I had two of everything. I had two brothers, two sisters, two parents. There were seven of us. I found out later on when I was an adult that I was an accident. Not a very nice way of putting it. I like to think that I was the fifth of four children. <laughs> I live here in Las Vegas. Moved out here six years ago. Folks back east, they can't grasp the idea of living in the desert or living in Las Vegas. They'll say things to me like, ooh, you live in Las Vegas, do you gamble a lot more? I say, no, but I gamble in different ways. For instance, I now buy meat at the dollar store. <laughs> you see some weird shit at the dollar store, let me tell you. I was there the other day, I bought a Yankee candle, took it home, lit it, it smelled like Reggie Jackson. <laughs> I was there the other day, I saw doggy ice cream, ice cream for dogs. This is a dumb idea. I had nothing to do with it. Tastes like shit, by the way. <laughs> ice cream for dogs. They already have ice cream for dogs. It's called ice cream. <laughs> it's good enough for me. It's good enough for the goddamn dog. It's not like he's got a waistline to worry about. He's not even wearing pants. At least not as often as I'd like him to. Somebody's buying this shit. Somebody's making a fortune off of doggy ice cream, which has led me to formulate a soft ice cream version for cats. I'm thinking of calling it Pussy Whip. I figure with a name like Pussy Whip, I can get Bill Clinton to endorse it. For free. Oh, Bill would be all over that shit. He'd show up with his big old crooked finger. Somebody say pussy. <laughs> when I say pussy, you say whip. <laughs> anyway, here we are, Las Vegas, Nevada. I travel a lot too. Traveling as I do, I have to take certain precautions. I think you know what I'm talking about. That's right, I got the flu shot. Let me tell you, I highly recommend the flu shot. I love the flu shot. The flu shot has changed my life. I am licking handrails. <laughs> I am kissing strange babies. I'm sucking on elevator buttons. It is awesome. <laughs> what floor was that? Five? I'll get it for you. 
It's okay, I got the flu shot. Yet I still managed to get a sinus infection. How's that work? Yeah, I was taking antibiotics. I was taking uh, Avalox. Sounds scary. Sounds uh, futuristic. Sounds like something to give me on Star Trek. Then I got to look at the info sheet. Turns out the generic name for Avalox is moxifloxacin. Not so scary now, is it? All these drugs have two names. Have you noticed this now? They got the uh, Star Trek name and they got the Dr. Seuss name. I finally found my Raboxacin. It was in the same drawer that my socks was in. I do not like green eggs and ham. I will not take diazepam. So I was at the drugstore. I was at the uh, CVS, the pharmacy. It's kind of a long line. I started to get a little annoyed. Normally, I'm a patient, even-tempered person. But there was only one register going. Eventually, a second employee, an old lady, she hops behind the counter. She fires up register two. She looks right at me and she says, I can take you. I dropped her with one punch. She never had a chance. She went down hard, let me tell you. Somebody had to teach this woman that such overconfidence was unbecoming in a woman her age. I am just the man to do it. I got a flat tire the other day. I did what anybody with a flat tire would do, right? I took my car to the tire store. That's where I encountered the tire store dude. I figured this was going to be a pretty straightforward transaction, right? I have a flat tire. He's the tire store dude. No, it doesn't work that way. Uh, I limp in there. What does he do? He grabs a clipboard, brushes past me, goes out of the parking lot, walks around my car three or four times with this awful look on his face, comes back into the showroom with his little clipboard, starts to give me a lecture. Sir, are you aware that tire is the wrong size? Well, right now I'm more concerned it's the wrong shape. <laughs> I don't remember coming in here and saying I had a small tire. No, I said I had a flat tire. Let me put this in terms you can understand, Dr. Firestone. That tire used to be shaped like a O. Now it's shaped more like a D. Make it round once again, Professor Goodyear. I'll be on my way. I need round tires. That's how I roll. <laughs> Went to the Timberland outlet with my wife. We bought a pair of boots. I brought them up the counter, gave the guy behind the counter my credit card. She fires up the register. She looks at me. She says, I'm going to need your phone number. I said, hello, this is my wife. She can hear you. Beware of the whores at Timberland. <laughs> They're very forward. I like to confuse people in retail situations as well. The other day I was at the restaurant. Young lady, the waitress, she's rattling off all the daily specials. I said, excuse me, pardon me, that, uh, that tilapia, was that raised cruelty free? She says, well, yes, it was, sir. I said, I don't want it. Anyway, I gotta go. Before I go, I wanna congratulate Mark one more time on number big five zero. Oh. Congratulate the rest of everybody who's here. Thank you very much. My name Brian is Brian. Brian, everybody. Good night.